Hi, I'm Li Chengyang from University of Alberta. This is a video of our paper, Double Adversarial Domain Adaptation for Whole-Sci Image Classification. So there are two major reasons that inspire this research. The first one is that we noticed the data distribution shift problem that having seen many machine learning tests can also be found in whole-sci image. Potential causes could be different stain processes by different institutions, a whole side image scan in different time or different machines and so on. What makes this problem even harder is the nature of whole side image, which is super resolution and the diagnostic information scattered everywhere. Also, the cost of labeling whole side image uh, is high, and diagnoses such as HER2 and Gleason scores are expensive to obtain. The second problem is that there are only few end to end pipelines for whole side image classification. Most of the whole side image classification approaches follows a multi instance learning, which consider each whole side image as a bag of instances. The instances could be the sample patches from the whole side image or two whole side code patches and uh, coordinates. So, a voting mechanism will define the category of the entire whole side image. The assumption behind this pipeline is that patch level labels must be closely related to the whole side image level labels, but it is not always the case. A newly proposed method called deep feature vector coding that adopts a new embedding based pipeline, which is the assumption and uh, uh, capable of predicting a single category for an entire whole side image end to end. So, in this paper, our work aims at improving the capability of this previous DFVC pipeline to cope with the domain gap issue caused by the data distribution shift by using unsupervised learning. So here is our integrated UDA solution. Our unsupervised learning approach uh, doesn't need any labeling on the target domain. Uh, first, the whole set images of both source and target domains are randomly sampled and uh, augmented. Then they are fed into a scene for feature encoding. Uh, afterwards, we forward the features to a domain classifier. Uh, this domain classifier works with the patch-wise features, as you can see, and is responsible for adapting local distribution shifts on patches from different domains. It outputs two domain labels, and our training goal is to confuse the domain classifiers so that the features are aligned after training. This is done by attaching a gradient reverse layer in front to enable adversarial training. Besides forwarding the features to the local domain adaptation part, both source and target CN encoded features from stage one are passed to the next stages. They are further processed by feature vector encoding and global average pooling. The global average pooling stage aggregates the individual features so that after this step, each host image is represented by a single vector. We insert another domain classifier that shares the same structure with adjusted input to this stage to align the aggregate features. The domain classifier adapts the feature distribution shift of the entire host image. So here is another view of the entire pipeline. Stage 1 feature encoding, stage 2 feature vector encoding, the stage 3 global average pooling, stage 4 uh, final classification. So we extract uh, the stage 1 and stage 3 features for adversarial loss calculation, and we combine them in the final loss calculation. We test our method on two HER2 IHC breast tissue dataset. One dataset is collected from the Alberta CCI, which has 500 whole side image. The other is from the Public Available Warwick Challenge, which has 52 whole side image. We split the Warwick dataset into a train set and a test set. Uh, the test is to predict four categories of HER2 scores describing the world we challenge for each whole side image. We set up the experiments, follow several settings typically used in domain adaptation research. First is a source train model that uses only source domain train set and the annotations to train the model. Second is an Oracle setup that trains the model with labeled target domain train set. Third is the adaptation that trains the model with label source domain and unlabeled target domain. The source train model in table A and the Oracle model in table B shows the accuracy drop of domain gap in whole side image. Table C and table D show that both adaptation on local stage and global stage can help increase accuracy. Um, compared to the global stage adaptation, the local stage adaptation has a better influence on all categories in the matrix. 
but global stage adaptation provides better separation between category 0 and category uh, 3 plus. From the result of table E, the double stage adaptation provides the best accuracy and completion metrics compared to the single stage adaptation in C and D. Uh, another interesting thing is that the training set of CCI data set is significantly large compared to the worry data set. The increased accuracy in these experiments also indicate that our solution might be able to apply to a scenario where the model could be trained in a bigger data set and adapt to a smaller data set elsewhere. Thanks for watching.